Right, welcome to episode three um, of new series on uh, the Cromford and High Peak Railway. Me and Phil are just making our way up to, well today we're going as far as Middleton Top. Um, but in this episode, episode three, we're going to be having a look at one of the things that makes the Cromford and High Peak Railway um, famous, I think, and that's the inclines. Uh, we've got sheep pastures behind us, so we're going to start climbing up that and have a look at some of the mechanisms um, that they used to use. During the conception of the Cromford and High Peak Railway, canals were in fashion and railways hadn't really taken off yet. The line exists as there was a desire to connect the Peak Forest Canal and Manchester's industry in the west to the Cromford Canal and the various industry in the East Midlands. A canal was considered but the number of locks to cross the Peak District would be enormous. So instead a tram road or tramway was decided to be the way forward horse drawn with rope inclines at several locations to pull the wagons up the steep gradients. An extremely ambitious venture at the time, coming only a handful of years after the Stockton and Darlington Railway, this makes it one of the world's oldest railways. A 33 mile long line opened at the turn of the 1830s connecting the two canals and shortly after the horses were replaced with steam engines. We'll see as we progress down the line, various challenges ultimately led to the line's closure. Apart from a few quarry lines, the railway closed in stages up to 1967. These days, a large portion of the line can be enjoyed on the High Peak Trail. In this episode, we start walking along the actual original route of the line, leaving the High Peak Junction area behind us and climbing high onto the moors above Cromford. What, what is this? I don't know what that is. I mean, is it some indicator? It's just a bit. B and G. I mean, if, if you, there's a lot of pictures uh, of people on Instagram stood in front of these, doing what you're doing now without really knowing what, well, the, what they are. The club, but what, what's BGS? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just an indicator, isn't it? It's not controlling anything or. It's yeah, but nobody, some... I would imagine that that moved somehow. It must have been connected to something. Because you've got these. It's not hollow. The mechanism at the back is just a bolt, actually. I don't know. So it's not connected to any no. signalling or anything like well, that. Why would anyone need to manually move the dial? There's some more of these, isn't there, further up yeah, as well, yeah, further along the trail. Them. Let's take a closer look at how the railway managed to ascend and descend such steep inclines. Each incline had two tracks one for wagons descending and one for ascending. In theory, wagons coming down would pull wagons going up, both attached to a wire rope. That would be perfect if loads were exact, so at the top of each incline sits a static steam engine to control the lifting and lowering of the loads up and down. At the foot of each incline, we will see the large wheels where the rope changed tracks. The job of attaching the wire rope to the wagons was carried out by men known as hangers-on. So, yeah, just in front, it does look like a tunnel. We've just been discussing. So the old photographs inside um, the museum, inside the old workshops at the bottom, there is. This did used to be a, a girder bridge. And twin track. Yeah, twin track, but there's not, it's not wide enough for tin, tin track. This retaining wall here. Yeah. Well, at some stage, the A6 has been widened. Um, and it's not a girder bridge anymore, is it? I mean, it's not new. The walls are new, aren't they? Look, the sides are, look pretty new, but the that frontage doesn't look. It's skewed, isn't it? So that's why it's got the diesel act to it. Because if it was just a straight bridge with an A6, it'd only be what 20 meters. But because it's skewed yeah. angle, it looks it's longer. Different, yeah. You know what? I mean already it's just astounding the gradient on this you ought to put a date stamp on the top like we do once in a while and then we won't be sat here debating it would we yeah that would be and yeah a date stone we always seem to be walking up these inclines well it'll change <laughs> when you get over to the end it's down isn't it all the last three inclines are down today's all up though isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
couple of inclines today. What's this at the other side then? So this is an interesting feature, quite uh, quite well photographed. So obviously we're at the bottom of the incline. Um, I would say go as far as saying railways and gravity don't really get along, do they? Um, always be scope for accident, wouldn't it? Just looking in, in the museum, we've just been having a look around. There were lots of photographs, lots of stories and newspaper cuttings about accidents on the incline. It sounds like an horrific place to work. And there's some quite horrific stories about trains um, leaping to the other side of the Midland Railway down at the, the workshops that we've just been. Um, and we've got a wagon here that I think is from the 1950s. So they installed this. I can't remember the dates now. When did they install this? So it wasn't always there then, no? No, no. So this loop, either side, would, it would have just been two straight tracks. Two straight tracks, up. yeah. So they just skewed them round the catch pit then eventually. I can't remember off the top of my head the date that they put this in, but it was a result oh, of... Excellent. Yeah. I think that's just plastic there. Um, it was a result of a particular incident when a, um, a truck or a wagon or something reached over 100 miles an hour and actually leaped over the canal over the railway the other side of the canal landed in the field the other side um so yeah they've put this catch pit in there uh, in in here at the bottom of the incline so i suppose they could just uh, a little change of the points just on the way down and anything that's out anything that's out of control a bit like my footing wow so Wet, isn't it? And here's a wagon from the 1950s that uh, met such a fate. It's dark in here, I don't know if this is coming out. A bit rotten now, isn't it? That's been there quite some, quite some time. Yeah, so obviously by that stage they're starting to think a little bit more about health and safety, aren't they? And we had lines going either side of this, and then obviously the catch pit in the middle. We'll carry on uh, going up the incline. Busy old trail, isn't it? That's a crash site. It's not that one. Ah, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, 1888 with the gunpowder. Yeah, gunpowder tray. You'd be taking care of that, wouldn't you, if you got gunpowder? Yeah, and then that was installed shortly after, two years later. So that catch pit was put in 1890 then. Right. We've barely left um, High Peak Junction at the bottom, was climbing. I just can't get my head around the, the steepness of these these inclines, but look, already, look how high we've come. No wonder they decided not to put it as a canal, because how many yeah. locks would you need to get up here? Well, yeah. I mean, bit of a crazy idea. I think you can put a railway up here. You know? Very ambitious, very, very ambitious. Got some stats. Sheep pastures incline, I don't know if bees, you don't always trust what you read on the internet stats wise. 1,320 yards in length. Um, gradient um, at its max of about 1.9. This shade's nice and welcome, isn't it? Come out nice today, hasn't it? These gradients that we're walking up, uh, the cameras never do it justice i remember i remember doing that one at grindleford which is a hell of a lot steeper than this one to the bowl hill quarry yeah and i went up last christmas actually i nearly nearly died when i got to the top but yeah when you look at it on the camera afterwards you think well it's not that it's yeah it does a good job at flattening things oh yeah i'm spotted yeah i'm walking past everything you think three quarters of the way down or three quarters of the way up well, it's certainly not a gradient, is it? <laughs> Three quarters of a mile. Is that all we've done? Is that all we've walked? I have missed this, being out and about, um, exploring on foot. Looks like some kind of a quarry, isn't it, here, Phil? 
correct myself, I said it was at worst one in nine. I'm, despite my advanced mathematics degree, um, can't read gradients. It's actually the worst was one in eight. This is implying that this was, like we've said before, it was one merge from two. Because if they're suggesting there, there was an engine house here, well, was that for the bottom bit? Yeah. So the engine house sit on top of there, or mm -hmm. is that it? That might have been just part it's of the resting quarters or something. Plinth up there, isn't there? No. We'll have a look. So, was below here the Cromford incline? Could be. Oh. Is that what we've been walking up? And then the minutes. Cromford engine house. Yeah, a second engine house, which she passed your top. So they're implying that the one there is a second one. And so, what's Cromford engine house? Is that what they're saying this was? Cromford lower engine house. That's what we've been looking at. There you go. You <laughs> Oh, the engine house was on this side then. So it was here then. So it wasn't. So it's been quite away for that reason because an house mm. used to be here. Oh. Oh, rocks up the top. What is that? Is that? Oh, I think that's just a uh, yeah. Fancy that falling down, <laughs> would you? That went out in fine. Catch no. it. Don't stop that. Let's look at the engineering and make the way through this cutting. Some stunning geography on the way up. It really, really, really is. Yeah, you need to walk this to really appreciate the extent of it. Severity, yeah. I mean, from the rock faces on, on the left, we're just clinging to this shelf now. And look at that. Didn't realise. Look at the retaining wall down there. Such a sheer drop. That road just looks like a micro machines down there now. It's a bridge down there. See, it's been fascinating just what the things you come across on your journeys, places like this. I think it just says danger, keep out. So there's some quarrying equipment here to fetch you around. Let's try and get an angle from the sun. Look here, some pulley wheels. Lifting equipment, that isn't it, very primitive lifting equipment. You see? Yeah, inside some kind of quarry, just on the side of the railway. Did that all the tree look? Isn't it, yeah. So this is just over halfway, isn't it? deformed tree so there's a bridge just down there look we've just walked over the top over the top of that little archway so many little walkways isn't there around here if you're not scared of your hills look at these brave souls biking up there as well that's as bad as the incline itself this isn't, isn't it is it going to get off is it all quarries and that around here oh, then all little it, yeah it's coming here little paths linking quarries yeah, it's a What's this? It's an old post. A telegraph post. Copy. Oh, well, I'm pleased to say we're just about at the top now. Make a good bobsleigh. Sure would. <laughs> it's like a bit of rain in front. Thank you. So yeah, we've got, so we've got the, uh, the hexagonal, the old engine house. Originally, the engine house housed a Butterley Works built beam steam engine. We'll see a better example of this in a future episode at Middleton Top. However, in 1883, this was found to be beyond economical repair. 
It was replaced with the workings of an actual railway locomotive converted and mounted in the same engine house. Only a couple of years before the line's closure, the steam engine was replaced by an electric motor. See that? It's on the side of the wall there. Good spot from Phil. A bit more windy, isn't it, up here? Probably Phil didn't want. So what was this bit here? Well, a little engine house, I guess. Associated workings with it. It's the one that's narrow, it's all obviously oh. in them days, it'd be quite wider, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, 1320 yards long, built 1828. The structure, isn't it? Let's have a look inside. Oh, let's get the old stairs up there. <laughs> the old beams. So. The winding wheel must have sat on here. So late, uh, I didn't realise it closed so late. Uh, you know, you all notice now, you always see more when you look, don't you? There's a, no pictures around, like, of the inside of anything on the notice board. Yeah. Look at the uh, fittings on the left there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, man. Poly wheels. So, are they, where did the cables leave the building then? Is it through? There's a, there's a hole. I mean, that could have been just filled in, couldn't it? Sort of where something were mounted on here, like a cross shape. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and here as well. Mm. It's very dark. I'm really, really sorry. Just trying to figure out the what knots and wherefores inside the old engine house. But yeah, brilliant. It's great you can come in this because how many times are we good places? Um, and we're just left gawping through the window, um, seldom seen. Yeah, Kinton, one example. I love those staircases there. I wonder if this beam was just holding up the uh, the floor. So three floors. Rock that's been cut away for the recess. This took some effort, didn't it? This. Look at this for a view. Cromford down there, isn't it? The railway line down there, yeah. Oh well, yeah, you can see the uh, rugby pictures down um, down near the other Cromford Wharf. What a view! Well worth the climb, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. Right, that wraps up episode three. It is episode three, isn't it? Lost count, I'm only at three, another lost count. Um, so, yeah, cheers for watching. We'll see you on the next one.